We're going up the hill again. This time the race is on for sure. You only get penalized if you touch a cone. They don't tell you which side of the no. cone you can go. <laughs> Now we need to figure out how we're going to get grip because there's no grip. So I get podium? You get podium. Okay. <laughs> how amazing. We launched the uh, Tiguan R last year and now we're going to launch the, the Golf R. So we said, let's combine that, yeah? But it needed to be something on top, yeah? And we're so, so excited to have Peter with us. Um, it's going to be an outstanding event. Yo, who do I have to kiss? Anybody, I swear, I'll do it. Volkswagen had invited a select group of motoring media to join them at this year's Simola Hill Climb and to ensure that they were in a performance frame of mind, they eagerly took on the 261km road trip from Port Elizabeth to Neisner in the Tiguan R and the just launched Golf R. Who's my money on? Well, I would like to say Jonathan because uh, he's a uh... For lack of a better word, it's a loud mouth, so I hope that can, his skill can back that up. I hear that it's similar to Goodwood that happens abroad, so I'm very excited to see what goes down this weekend. We've brought our flagship products and we're going to show the competition some flames this weekend. A lot faster than last year's car. Yeah, keen to show Jonah how it's done. Bring it, puppy, let's, let's go. go. Let's go, let's go. Nothing. We've definitely upped the game this year. Golf hours. Yeah. So, we're going up the hill again. This time the race is on for sure. What do you think is going to happen to the loser this time around? We jumped off the bridge against um, our wall. Really. But um, I, hear, I heard Marius talking about the penalty being quite severe for the loser this year. Yeah. What do you reckon he's going to make us do? Or at least the loser, actually. To be honest with you, I actually don't know. Actually, you never know with Morris. You never know with Morris. I don't know what he's going to do. But uh, I definitely think it's going to be you, the loser, for sure. 100%. <laughs> It's not, it's not going to be me this year, it's going to be you. In your dreams, dude! It's not happening. It's not happening. Wait for the game, man. I'm grounded! I, I, yeah, no, it's not happening, but... If I'm grounded, I'm good, it'll do anything. But heights, no. You know what would be great? I mean, you know what would be shit? As if they made us play golf. Oh, no. Not golf. I'm just happy that we're driving through it and not over it. Yeah, that's true, I guess. Cheers, Bridge. <laughs> Let's go.
I'm really grateful, you know, that Volkswagen here in South Africa flew the car down from the museum at Volkswagen in Wolfsburg, uh, brought the team down here and, and to make this, this event special. And um, it's special for us also to come back again. gonna beat that. <laughs> Come on, try, try. Open it, Daniel. Go, Daniel. First of all, the atmosphere from the start line will be incredible. Yeah. And uh, I think the speed you will have into the first corner. I think you maybe have to lift a, a little bit. But uh, it's the fastest hill climb I have been uh, doing in my life. It's very different. And when we did the Good Video Festival of Speed, yeah, it, it's actually a tight course. It's, it's only the fast part is over the finish line, you know? You must never ever, ever let anything go wrong because th this country, they remember it forever and ever and ever. <laughs> yeah. Because if you go off here, they just leave you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, but here, compared with the rally, the rally stage, you know, this is like a motorway, you know. Yeah. Oh, it's, yeah. Uh, so, yeah. That, that would be your rally stage too on the inside, on the yeah. left. And a little bit up on the bank. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, it would actually be very impressive. I'm sure you'll create enough hyper that we start the really close from that side. Yeah, so. so then, then this, this becomes straight. It doesn't look straight now, but when you're in it, it it's straight up. Otherwise, it's flat to the top? Yes. Yeah, yeah it's flat. So, Is this so, uh, almost flat? Very close. Depending on the grip, I don't know about road tires. I, I really don't know. On my way, hey, on, on my your way. car? It's flat. <laughs> Don't worry about that. <laughs> no, <probably>. yeah. 230 <laughs> horsepower. Yeah. No, 320. Is it? Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, maybe you have yeah. to lift a little bit. Uh. Well, I'm planning to go on the inside here. That's a great that's plan. That's a much shorter way, you well, know. That's what I, it's that's a what rally I, car, you know. That's what I said before. That's <laughs> it. You only get penalized if you touch a cone. They don't tell you which side of the no. cone you can go. <laughs> A lot of history and a lot of love for this car but just the the passion and the, the support that you see wherever you take it always always knocks me down I mean it's 
it's just so nice to see. We had a great deal of success with it, obviously. It's a very, very successful car. It has a very special part of three of the World Championships that I've been involved with. The combination of the compact size and its the abilities of the chassis are phenomenal. The engine's very powerful, it, it sounds great. The car in its current specification is, it was prepared for the museum in Wolfsburg to be in its Rallycross specification. So we've run it previously on some other time events where we still had access to this huge package of parts that we, we don't have access to anymore. So the car has come here literally as if you plucked it off the last round in South Africa in 2018 from the Rallycross and, and brought it here. Rather than to be super competitive, we've come here to, to put on a show and show what a Rallycross car is capable of doing even against the very specific bespoke equipment that's here to, to do the job. In Rallycross, the tracks are very compact. There's, there's no big straights, so the car is geared for around 200 kph. We can, we can gain a little bit more on that, but some of the top cars here are much, much faster than that. We're a little bit limited by spending significant time on the rev limiter. I must have heard this car launch a thousand times and it still puts an enormous grin on my face. <laughs> And then it was time for the five times Norwegian rally champion Henning Solberg to get to grips with a 1.9 km Samola Hill. The hill is very, very fast. And I have a bad feeling that Petty cannot take the record here with this car compared to this other. Uh, they are very, very fast. That's what I heard, you know, and I saw the 43 and, you know, it, it's a number that FIA have taken away for respect, you know. And uh, I didn't know how to take it, but uh, we talked to the organizer and and yes, it's nice, but maybe on the other side, some people can have another feeling about it. So we put it on the one before, so they gave me 143. So uh, it's still a memorable thing, uh, but it's the number for Ken. So that's uh, that's the thing. So. And Ken's number one. Yeah, Ken is number one there. So um, so it was nice from the organizer to, you know, because it was a draw after what they said. So obviously it's a sign and, uh, and then we try to respect it the other way. with this setting since 2018. <laughs> so this was actually the first run since that time. And uh, because the, the, the chassis is very different compared with Goodwood, you know? So we're gonna fight you a little bit and we're gonna try some different tires later and uh, just be here to enjoy the moment of uh, all the people that come here with the families and in having this type of passion like we have. Never gonna do that again in my life. Yeah, I'm not a heights person. Marius, if you do anything stupid this year, I swear I will pee on your pillow. If I'm grounded, I'm good. I'll do anything. Marius has lost plot. Tra la 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 la. I know what this is. But I'll let you explain. No, no, no. What is it? The thing goes brrrr. He's saying the loser has to shave something. Mm -mm. <laughs> but no, that's, that's not the thing. Now those drivers who had not set cracker times during Saturday's qualifying runs in the dry had reason to be relaxed come Sunday morning. With overnight rain and the threat of more throughout the day, it would be near impossible to improve times in the final three qualifying runs. 
it doesn't matter so much, you know. We are here to show the car and uh, the Volkswagen what is capable of with uh, 600 horsepower and the enjoyment, you know. So for spectators, I actually want sunshine and, you know, I like sunshine also, but let's have good fun for one run anyway and then we we'll see what's happening. Last week out before, before the finals, series on top. Jonathan had set the benchmark time in the final qualifying run late Saturday afternoon. Could his 47.968 seconds be beaten today? You know, we came to, uh, to put on a show for the crowd, and I think I delivered on that. Yeah, there's a little bit of juggling involved, <laughs> but had a really good run out of two. Hitting up the hill, I thought, oh, this is going to be a new personal best top speed, you know? I went into the brakes and I realized that the track surface was actually a little bit lighter than, than I remember. So I turned it in, caught a little bit of dirt and uh, yeah, just had to like shuffle and keep it out of the black stuff. Well, after that massive save, Jonathan would not be bettering his time. And with the drying track, the door had been left open for Henning or Daniel to wrestle back the Golf R bragging rights in this final qualifying run. Well, that was Henning's best run the whole weekend, but not enough. So it all came down to Daniel and his final run. Great exit out of three, and in these tricky conditions, it was a mega run to post his fastest time of the weekend. It would prove to be a very close shave. Wait, wait, so who took it? You? Me? Huh? Four thousandths of a second! <laughs> oh, that's great! Enjoy the fun, I can say. Point. <laughs> Did you bring the shave or? Boy, ain't it? You forgot we have a third driver, boy. Hey, okay, you're lucky, you're lucky. <laughs> good luck. Let's go find him. <laughs> yeah, I had a good time. I was struggling a little bit uh, with some things, but uh, it's get, it got better today. It was just an amazing wake up this morning when it was raining. I'm like, oh, well, I've qualified already and I don't even have to uh, stress about it too much. Unfortunately for everybody else, especially Owen, who is our race this weekend, he needs to pull his finger out and hope like hell it stops raining and it gets dry. So otherwise he's not even going to be in the class final at the moment. I'm going to take it to him anyway. I know 10th and a half doesn't sound like a long way, but on this hill, when last year I lost by 16 thousandths of a second, 10th and a half is a long way. Well, the rain had returned as we rolled into the B2 class final. But sadly, the Titanic showdown we'd all been hoping for never got off the line. We had some issues yesterday with the boost, maybe he'd boost cut a few many times. Uh, head gasket's gone, so we'll be back here next year. Eh? We've done a good job, I'm sorry for Owen, not, uh, not being able to have a last run. But I think we did a very good job with the car in the wet. It's a really good feeling. We don't have a, a full wet solution, so somewhere in between would be nice, but honestly, if, uh, for the solution that we have with the rally cross car, anything that reduces the, the overall grip condition brings it in our direction. So, so yeah, I'm happy to see that it's not dry anymore. So, <laughs> class final, take it steady, get us to the final and then see what we can do in the, the lower grip conditions. Does he listen? Never. Netta had totally dominated his B3 class, running times that would keep the Big Boost boys honest all weekend didn't put a wheel wrong in the class final. When he did his run now, it was a lot wetter than, uh, than we'd anticipated, but uh, nonetheless he won the class, and I think that's, you know, that's one box ticked. Let's see what happens in the top ten. Yeah!
Defense for the last time today against the Apple Cray Assault Fire. Come on! So Petter and Vilma catapulted into the King of the Hill final, taking on the Goliaths, producing double horsepower and tripping the speed traps 30 kilometers an hour faster. Only a driver with his pedigree, piloting Volkswagen Motorsport's most successful machine, could achieve what he did in this fast and unforgiving hill climb. I get podium. You get podium. Okay. <laughs> How amazing. Is That's that? incredible. I was hoping for podium, you know. <laughs> I was really pumped up. <laughs> the start was good straight away, but again, he lost the grip after. But it's it's so tricky, the conditions there. Yeah. I came into the first corner absolutely flat, and I kept it even longer than before. And I put it out to fifth gear just to hold it. And I came, I tried to turn it, but it kept going out. So I was touching the gravel, and I was flat out up to the top, trying to brake late as possible came in the corner and I knew it was water in the middle so I put it down to fourth just to keep the car together to accelerate and uh, after that I just uh, tried to try dance to, it's a dance <laughs> actually yeah that's a good word dance with the corners and uh, to the finish line but uh, it was a good run actually you know and thanks to all the fans and people who came here with the families this means a lot a really enjoyable weekend mm -hmm. thank you very much thank you everybody He isn't known as Mr. Hollywood for nothing, signing out in true Peter Solberg fashion. He was a class act all weekend, on the hill and off it. Looking fast.